Hey guys, welcome back. So because I receive so many messages from you guys asking about how you can start a new wardrobe, that is what today's video is going to be about. Some of you might be just kind of getting into fashion and you wanna kind of start exploring some new styles. So in today's video, I'm going to do my best to cover all of the topics related to starting a new wardrobe and just give you guys a step-by-step -step guide on building a new wardrobe from start to finish. The first step is something that you need to do before you even embark on your journey of starting a new wardrobe and that is why it doesn't really count as an actual step yet. It's something that you have to realize before you even begin. If you're having any thoughts that you can't wear a certain clothing style because of your body type or maybe you just think you're not confident enough or you can't pull it off, do your absolute best to try and abandon these thoughts right now. I know you're thinking, well, easier said than done, but trust me, I have been through those thoughts so many times myself. I still have them occasionally to this day, and you just need to realize that life is too short to not wear the clothes that you want to wear and try out the styles that you want to try because in the grand scheme of life, it really just doesn't matter. You don't want to look back and think, dang, I wish I had worn that crazy vintage head to toe pastel outfit that I really wanted to wear. It's not an overnight fix and it does take practice to just sort of go for it and wear those styles and gradually build the confidence. It really is just mind over matter. And I think I'm just trying to give you this little pep talk to try and speed up the process a little bit. If you know that you're interested in trying out a new style or maybe you're just interested in becoming a little bit more fashion conscious but you don't really know what style that is and you don't really know where to start, that means you need to do a little bit of research. Maybe you've seen some people wearing outfits that you like but you don't actually know what that style is even called. Maybe you're not sure what kind of style suits you and your personality or you know, you just don't really know what style you're truly passionate about yet but all you know is that you really wanna get into fashion. So if you're one of those people who's just feeling a little bit overwhelmed and you're not sure where to start, it's time to start your research and find some inspiration inspiration by doing something as simple as starting a Pinterest board or starting a Tumblr blog. Honestly, when you hear tips like just get a Pinterest, even that is overwhelming because the internet is so highly saturated with so much fashion and so many different types of fashion and so many different like sub genres of fashion and all that kind of stuff. So just start with something as simple as searching for one kind of clothing item that you like. Think of something that you've seen on somebody that you really loved and you wanted to try out. This could be oversized denim jackets. Even if the search result isn't what you were looking for, it actually really helps to know what you don't like as well. Knowing what kinds of styles you don't like is equally as important as knowing what you do like. And don't forget to keep finding new inspiration as well, even after you've kind of developed your new wardrobe because Finding new inspiration is so important and it just keeps your creativity flowing and keeps giving you new ideas to try out. Everything we like comes from a source, even if we don't remember it. Try not to only think about the things you like, but also why you like them. It's a real skill and it's actually not that easy to do. Knowing not only what you like, but also why you like it will kind of unlock this door in your mind that will allow you to more easily pinpoint what kind of clothing you want for your new wardrobe. For an example, I'm going to use an easy one. Let's just say you really love chokers. 
You might think that you like them because you saw them just somewhere online, on Instagram, maybe you just like them because they're trendy, but no, we actually need to go even further than that. The reason you like chokers might be because they are from the 90s and it gives you a feeling of nostalgia for the 90s and nostalgia is an extremely powerful feeling. It could even be simply because you think they are really flattering on the neck it reminds you of Cinderella and still it could even be something as simple as you seeing a choker on a celebrity or some other kind of public figure or idol that you really like or look up to and you just want to emulate their style and that's just why you like it. My point is if you just try and figure out the reasoning behind why you like any particular clothing item or style, you should write them down because you might even notice that there's a common theme going on. And this common theme might even give you some clues into what kind of style you are truly the most passionate about. So once you've taken some time to find inspiration and figure out what kind of style you're most interested in building a wardrobe for, and this even could be multiple different styles, which is fine as well, it's time to write a list of the essential clothing items that you will need for that wardrobe. Remember, it doesn't have to be too restricted to these individual labeled styles or anything. It could still be just kind of a mixture of multiple different things, whatever works for you and your list can be quite broad or it can be more specific. It doesn't have to be anything too strict. A great way to start is to look at the inspiration images that you have gathered and try and note any particular clothing items that are common throughout. For example, if you are really into a kind of preppy look, maybe some key items that you spot in your images could be a really nice tailored blazer, a button-up collared shirt, or maybe a high-waisted A-line skirt. But remember that you want to start with the more basic and most wearable items that you think you will wear on a day-to-day -day basis, and then gradually work your way into the seasonal items or the more kind of special occasion items that you wouldn't wear all the time, such as a winter coat, or even maybe some items that are a little bit more outside of your comfort zone and you're not quite sure if you are ready to try those yet. You don't have to think of all of your ideas at once, you can gradually work your way up to other things and add to your list as time goes by, there's really no rush. So starting out with your basic items, you can go ahead and write out your list. So now that you have your shopping list ready, it's time for some trying and testing. First of all, you don't have to go and buy everything at once because this is kind of overwhelming and probably won't be financially practical to just go and buy a whole ton of clothes to fit an entire wardrobe all at once. Take your time with it. It could take days, weeks, even months or maybe super gradually over the course of a year. Second of all, I'm really not one to kind of believe in like, this kind of thing looks flattering on this kind of body type. But with that said, we all do have things that we prefer on our bodies and that's totally fine. Just, yeah, never feel too restricted. Oh, this necklace is like killing me. It keeps popping under my sweatshirt. Basically what I'm saying is don't get caught up in what you think other people or magazines or the internet or whatever thinks you should be wearing. Just go with what you feel comfortable wearing. Another super important tip for when you're trying on clothes and sussing out what things you want to buy is that there's no such thing as universally sized clothing or a cut or style being universal, even if it's something like a high-waisted jean or an A-line dress, they are all going to be different depending on the country, the brand. There are so many different factors, so don't be disheartened if there was a particular clothing item you went looking for, you tried it on and you think it looks terrible on you. I know it sounds kind of funny, like I'm saying, it's not you, it's the clothing. But honestly, that is the fact of it and you just gotta accept it and don't let it get you down. In a dream world, all of our clothing would be custom made and tailored to fit our bodies perfectly, but that's not really very realistic. So instead of that, we just have to be patient 
and spend a little bit of extra time trying a whole bunch of different things. So with all that being said, you can basically just go ahead and shop for these clothing items on your list. You may prefer to shop in person so you can try things on in a fitting room or you could just order things online. Just make sure that the store does have some kind of return system in place, ideally free returns, so you can try them on at home and just return any of the ones that you're not happy with. Trying things on is also really important because sometimes we think that we love a certain clothing item so much and we get so caught up in this idea that we're going to love it and wear it but then when you try it on you realize that you don't really feel happy or confident in it and that's okay because sometimes you can like a certain clothing item or style without actually wanting to wear it yourself so that's also why trying things on is so important So now that you've got the essential clothing items for your new wardrobe, it's time for the fun part, which is styling and wearing some new looks. This part could be a little daunting and it's definitely challenging, but it's also really fun and creative. It's really important just to try and try again because practice makes perfect and this applies for most anything really, including fashion and styling. Something I get a lot of questions about from you guys is how to style one particular, very specific clothing item. For example, I get a lot of questions about the American Apparel tennis skirt. And pretty recently, for example, I think I got a question about the 1461 Doc Martens. When it comes to styling specific clothing items, this kind of goes back to one of those earlier points that I was talking about, thinking about where you first saw things and why you like them. And this really applies here as well when you're trying to figure out how to wear something. Think back to where you saw it, who you saw it on, even if it was in a TV show or a movie or something. And if you like how they wore it, you can even just kind of take inspiration from how they styled it. This kind of seems like a no-brainer, right? And like with the American Apparel Tennis Skirt, which I get so many styling questions about, you guys are probably asking me about it because you saw me wearing it. So maybe go back to those videos or photos that you saw me wearing the skirt in and that should kind of give you your answer on a way that you could possibly style it. You might already have the answer to your styling questions. You just don't really realize it yet. So yeah, that's why it's so important to really dig deep into where you first saw something, who you saw wearing it and why you liked how it looked on them. And just in case you might be thinking, oh, but isn't that kind of like copying somebody? Is that okay? And in regards to that topic, it's a massive topic, the idea of copying versus taking inspiration. And I'm just, I, I don't have time to go off on that tangent in this video, but long story short, I think it's just something to be cautious of because if you do tend to kind of copy people from head to toe in terms of styling too directly, too often, it can hinder your ability to style things yourself. So simply just be mindful of where you get your ideas and how directly you either copy or take inspiration from things. You know, you don't need to really beat yourself up about it or like take it too seriously because you know, at the end of the day, no one's really that original anyway, so you know what I mean? So yeah, do whatever you have to do to truly develop your own styling skills and ability to come up with an outfit without having to look to somebody else for ideas. So think about those ideas you have for styling any particular pieces and create those outfits yourself with the items in your wardrobe and then even try snapping a photo with it on your phone so you can remember for when you want to actually wear it. When you're starting out with your new wardrobe or new style, it can be really helpful to have some pre-planned outfits because when it comes to the day that you're like, okay, I'm gonna try out this new look, it can be a little bit daunting and overwhelming trying to put it together on the day, but if you have that peace of mind that you have your ideas planned and ready, you can just whip out your phone, look at those 
photos of the outfits that you took and you're like, yes, I'm gonna wear that one today. It's so fun to try out new styles and to debut a new clothing item that you haven't worn yet. So just try whatever you want, try wearing it in whatever way you think. There's no right or wrong way to style things. And honestly, the best way to learn is to just go for it and wear it. And if something doesn't work out for you on one day, there's always tomorrow so you can try again. So at this stage, you should have successfully kicked off your new wardrobe. If you guys have any further questions about building a new wardrobe, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Also, be sure to give me a thumbs up on this video to let me know if you found this video helpful because if you guys did find it useful, I will definitely be sure to make more kinds of videos like this in the future. And as I'm sure many of you would already know, I do answer a ton of styling related questions and all other types of questions over on my Tumblr, which I will insert here somewhere. It will also be linked below in the description box. So if you have a particular lengthy or kind of a trickier question for me to tackle, definitely head over to my Tumblr and ask it there because that's where I am able to give much kind of longer and in-depth answers as I don't really tend to put really lengthy answers in the YouTube comments. And that about finally concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me and I will see you all in my next one.